Oh yeah, this is one of those pretty 3D printed things. And the case in general looks, oh, on the top it looks kind of cool, but at the front it looks kind of ugly. You can see how, oh man, how ugly it is. Having a switch over there, another sticker. At the back we're finding all kinds of connections, HDMI, old school output, four USB ports, 3 though, RG45, a headphone and a speaker output and the input for the power supply. And that's it. There was nothing much actually to see. Like the layout looks absolutely great. <laughs> the LCD games. But all games, Amstrad, GX4000, Apple, MAME. There is so much different stuff. It's unfortunate that Atari about and some other stuff is not having nice decals. Maybe we can change it out, update it. We have even some Windows games. So the image they are using is the Botacera version 38 at this point. So system settings, let's go in there. Information. So let's see what kind of hard drive. 500 gigabytes, and I know there are two terabytes or one terabyte out there. The model number is the ETX N100 chip, so that is quite promising because the in Intel N100 is a very good over a newer generation chip. And in the end, so much better than the crap that we've seen before. Eight gigabytes on total RAM. Temperature is 32 Celsius, let's say idle. And the reason I think it's absolutely cool because with the onboard Intel graphics, we're going to be having some interesting things we can do with this. But the N100 is not like an ultimate powerhouse like an AMD Ryzen. It's, in, it's actually like way better than most, like say, really old crap they're using in these mini PCs now. The thing that is really appealing about the N100 chipset is that we can actually play some N64 without any problem whatsoever. Yeah, so the N64 is such a problematic emulator for low-end chips. And we have tried this on so many different boxes now. However, this is not going to be a problem when it comes to cruising the USA. The ultimate test for actually playing some games. But I also wanted to check out some other games and also do a little bit of an upscaling. Because this is one of those systems where we can actually do upscaling. And I think it makes N64 look so much better. Particularly if you're going to be using this mini PC on a bigger screen. I think it's one of the very convenient things of emulation that we have like overall better performance or at least better overall graphical performance than the original system or you need to have like those very expensive modifications been done where you have internal resolution upscaling because it is possible in origin, original hardware but it's just freaking expensive however let's get into some different game because this runs just fine so we're getting into the N64 advanced game options. So when you're going to be going into the video options in here, for example, like the advanced option, we can sometimes do a little bit of an upscaling. So if you do have a problem with this, so we don't have this option, what you need actually to do is go all the way back to emulators and set it up here. We're having all kinds of different emulators like the Movement 64 Plus next and all kinds of different parallel is one of them. I do sometimes use when it comes for upscaling and you need to check out what is possible. For example, random resolution over here, we can go all the way up. Let's say, let's go six times. We can do some crazy stuff all the way to 80 times. Not going to be doing that. But let's say we're going to be trying to boost it up from 9020 by 4040 and see how that actually runs. Okay, so we're going to be saving that and let's boot it up. But let's get in some gaming and you can see some stuttering going on because now we're going to be pushing this N100 actually like this low power chip to the maximum level. So let's see what happens. We're going to be having a 50 frames per second with some minor dip of 42. So in other words, you can play f 0 x on native resolution, but when it comes to upscaling, I think we need to step it down one little step. Uh, simply because this is just too much. If you don't mind the hiccups, then it's not going to be a problem whatsoever. So out of the box, we can play it on a resolution, no problem, what kind of game. And of course, you can also switch between the different emulators if you want to. But let's move into some GameCube and we're going to be upscaling to the 720p. I don't want to do 1080p because that is going to be way too much. I think it's absolutely great to see that we can have like basic chips that have upscale options when it is possible. However, you can see some dips of 45, but let's get into the gaming and let's say how it's going to be running in general. Because yeah, this is going to be in combination of what kind of game you're going to be using and what kind of resolution. Because an F-Zero GX, for example, is going to be way more difficult to emulate. It's dipping to 42. So the resolution is going to be absolutely like pushing this device to the limit. So 
So let's start off with some arcade stuff at Thomas Wave, but this time 720p emulation performance. And yeah, I must say that where we had a lot of problems on, with this particular system on basic boxes, we can even do a little bit of upscaling and it's absolutely a bonus. But let's get into the part where we're going to be having a lot of stuff going on and you can see it runs without a lot of problems through here no problem 60 frames per second sega saturn with the 4k resolution or rendering resolution and the reason why i wanted to check this i can already see that it struggles here and there because i've been doing all kinds of tests with both the on older like pcs like the amd ryzen a very cheap one i picked up for i think it's like 90 freaking dollars and i had like an amazing overall 4k rendering resolution support and i think that's to do because amd ryzen and their internal gpu is absolutely amazing and with the n100 is significantly improved from the older models it's still not enough for having 4k rendering resolution with sega saturn now using yava sensudo but maybe can tweak some little bit of unless in different emulators but out of the box with Yaman Shishiro no this is not the way how you want to experience the Sega Saturn games I have never had this great of an experience with Sonic racing you know <laughs> normally I just suck at this game <laughs> I'm even the second place let's see me go Woohoo! going to be beating knuckles come on come on there we go come on I find it very interesting to see how responsive this freaking joystick is of this horrible fake Xbox controller because it's really horrible compared with the original system or original controller. Okay, yeah, I think I officially messed it up now. Yep, yep, third place. Yep, I messed it up. Arrgh, there we go. The next system in line is the Sega Dreamcast. I'm just going to be putting it at a 1080p resolution. You did notice that the 4K rendering resolution of the Sega Saturn was not a good thing. The unfortunate, I don't have a frame per second counter, it doesn't be enabled. But let's boot it up if I can even drive at this freaking thing. Oh, there we go. No, 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 there we go. I can hear that it struggles on 1080p. And of course it will be depending what kind of game you're going to be playing. But when it comes to playing this game, getting into the game is not going to be a big problem with some minor hiccups. So moving on to the 1080p and PlayStation 2. And of course here same story that we do have a little bit of a difference between the games. So we need to do a little bit of tweaking. We don't have enough power to say like, hey, we're going to be rendering everything on 1080p or 4K or 2K resolution. So it's going to be different per game, but with this particular one, it seems to be working just fine. I just wanted to start off with a two-dimensional one. 